occurred, whatever the trends, he was working away diligently exploring yellows and grays, as he was many other hues, trying to get subtlety, different interactions, sometimes doing half paintings to try to work out the colors or in preparation for a print. And I'm asking you now just to look at a series of paintings. Trust me that no two are the same. The sizes of the actual objects are different. And what I hope you'll do is pick your favorites. Notice the different ways in which they move. Each variation was a thrill for him. Sometimes so light and luminous, and then he would call this his square fried egg. <laughs> Sometimes he really wanted the edges between colors to disappear. He told me that Cartier Bresson, the photographer, came on a couple of occasions to photograph him, said, Joseph, you paint circular squares, and that's because the corners appear to disappear. There are about 10 albers at the Met at the moment, and there are two of this type, which if Isabel had done the installation would have been placed in relation to each other. Um, and it's very interesting and informative to compare. I'm gonna need some stuff to come. Now, sometimes Joseph, with four colors, could do two paintings that at first could appear almost the same. Then the more you look, the more you begin to perceive differences. To me, in the one on the left, the center square is nearer. One on the right, it's further away. And yet, if you describe either of these paintings, the description would be pretty much the same. It's a painting of four squares. I've explained the mathematical proportions. All the paint is straight out of the tube on white background. You have a golden yellow, another golden yellow, a deeper yellow, and a gray. Verbally, it's almost the same painting. These are two very different paintings. And I'm going to have you look for about a minute